When I'm with my friends and we need to pass the time, I'm more likely to engage in a spirited round of rock, paper, scissors than I am to recreationally carry out some division using paper and pencil. And so perhaps it's not a surprise that I only recently learned about this division method called short division. It's much like the long division method, but some of the stuff you write out when doing long division is kept in your head, and thus the short division method can be incredibly snappy. I'm going to speed up my process of going through this long division problem, just so you can see how unwieldy long division can be, and then we'll do the same thing but with short division, and we're not going to speed it up, and then we'll use short division to answer this question. What is the remainder when this massive number, 2 to the power of 4901, is divided by 11? Alright, so to do 23,768 divided by 8, for 8 no. So the result of the division is 2,971. So that's a little bit of long division. This is actually not how I was taught to do division in school. I was taught how to do division using, I guess, what's called the chunking method. And perhaps I'll make a video on that sometime if I can think of anything interesting to say about it. So how is this? Well, it's not terrible, but I mean, it does take up a lot of space. Let's try the same division problem, but with short division. Structurally, we set the short division up in a similar way. We have this same sort of L shape that's going to help us with our information. We put 8 there, that's the divisor, and then the dividend, 23,768. The difference with short division is that we're not going to actually write out all of these numbers where subtracting when we use the long division method. We're going to keep some of that stuff in our head, and with the short division method, we'll just be writing down remainders until we end up with our final answer. So check this out. Does 8 go into 2? No. Does it go into 23? Yes, it goes into 23 twice, so we put a 2 there with a remainder of 7. So we put a 7 there. Then we're looking at 77. Does 8 go into 77? Yes, it goes into 77 9 times. 8 times 9 is 72. We have a remainder of 5. Put that 5 there. Now we're looking at 56. Does 8 go into 56? Yes, 7 times with a remainder of 0. Does 8 go into 8? Yes, 1 time. There's our answer. Ooh, baby, that's pretty snappy, isn't it? Why don't we try another one, and I'll even bust out the expensive luxury metallic sharpie. Let's speed run 321 divided by 12 using short division. I feel like I'm just watching my income melt away while I use this metallic sharpie. There's 321, there's 12, and we begin. Does 12 go into 3? No. Does it go into 32? Yes, it goes into 32 twice. 12 times 2 is 24, with a remainder of 8. So then we're looking at 81. Does 12 go into 81? Yes, it goes into 81 6 times, right? 6 times 12 is 72, so we would have a remainder of 9. So now we're dealing with decimals. I'll just put a point there. We would have a 0 there, but we had that remainder of 9, so now we're looking at 90. Does 12 go into 90? It goes into 90 er, 7 times, right? The 7 times 12 is 84, so we'll put a point 7. It goes into 90 7 times with a remainder of 6, so we also add a 0 there, and now we'll put a 6 there. That's the remainder. Does 12 go into 60? Yes, 5 times. There's the answer, 26.75. So this is another reason to sharpen your mental arithmetic skills. If you're decent at mental arithmetic, you can use short division instead of long division as much as it's practical for you. And hey, it is really speedy. In fact, if you only want to know the remainder that results from the division, you can do it even faster. Why would you ever want to know just the remainder? Well, for example, we might ask, is a certain number divisible by some other number? Like, is 1,452, for example, example, divisible by 11. I can figure this out if I just do a quick short division to figure out the remainder that results from the division of this number by this one. If the remainder is 0, then yeah, 1452 is divisible by 11. So let me show you how this works. Say we set up the short division, there is 11, the divisor, and there is 1452, the dividend. I'm not going to have to write any numbers up here because I'm only concerned with the remainder. I need to check if it's 0, because if so, the answer to this question is yes. 
guess. 1452 is divisible by 11. Does 11 go into 1? No. Does it go into 14? Yes, with a remainder of 3. Does it go into 35? Yes, with a remainder of 2. Does it go into 22? Yes, remainder of 0. So the answer is yes, 1452 is divisible by 11. Note that the mental arithmetic I did here was 11 goes into 14 once with a remainder of 3, and then 11 times 3 is 33, so 11 goes into 35 three times with a remainder of 2, and then 11 times 2 is 22, so it goes into 22 evenly with no remainder. Determining the remainder that results from a division problem is actually one of the most fundamental concepts of number theory and cryptography and mathematics more broadly. The concept is called modular congruence. So for example, based on what we just did, we would say that 1452 is congruent to, written with those three parallel lines, congruent to 0 mod 11. This means that when 1452 is divided by 11, there is a remainder of 0. And again, this is read 1452 is equivalent or is congruent to 0 mod 11. 11 here is called the modulus, and sometimes people say we mod out the 11s. If you take out all the 11s from 1452, 0 is left behind, because 11 goes into 1452 evenly. For another example of modular congruence, we could do more short division. For example, what is 582 congruent to mod 7. Well, this would be the remainder when 582 is divided by 7. So what goes here? Well, it's the remainder. Let's do some short division to figure out what that is. To do that short division, I draw my cute little bus stop symbol. There's 582, the dividend, and 7, the divisor. We're just trying to find the remainder. So again, we'll just jot down those remainders. We don't need to write any numbers up here. Does 7 go into 5? No. Does 7 go into 58? Yes, 8 times. 7 times 8 is 56. There's a remainder of 2. Does 7 go into 22? Yes, 3 times with a remainder of 1. So 582 is actually congruent to 1 mod 7, because division of 582 by 7 results in a remainder of 1. In many ways, modular congruence works just like the equals relation. For example, we could double both sides of this congruence to find that 1164 is congruent to 2 mod 7. If we divide 2 times this, 1164, by 7, we would get a remainder of 2. Now, with the power of modular congruence and short division, we can answer this question that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. What is the remainder when 2 to the power of 4901 is divided by 11? Obviously, we now know that what we're looking for here is a congruence. 2 to the power of 4901 is congruent to what mod 11? Of course, it's only the remainder here that's important, and good thing, because the size of this number is not something we're really prepared to deal with. Precisely because of the size of this number, we can't just go ahead and perform short division on it with 11 and find our remainder nice and easy. Not going to be so easy. What we first need to do is rewrite this expression on the left in a more manageable form. Well, thankfully, if you know your exponent rules, that won't be too difficult to do. 2 to the power of 4901 is the same as 2 times 2 to the power of 4900. In total, what we have here is 4900. 101 factors of 2. So this is the same as this. If we multiply 2 by this, we would get that. The idea is that we would just add the exponents, and so they would add back to that original exponent. Then, with more exponent rules, we can simplify this, which of course, as it stands, is still not easy to deal with. So we have 2 multiplied by 2 to the power of 10 to the power of 490. 2 to the 10 to the power of 490 can be evaluated by just multiplying those exponents together, which shows us that certainly this equality is true. 490 times 10 would give us back that exponent of 4900. Now 2 to the 10 is in fact something we can deal with, whether you want to use a calculator or paper and pencil or your head. I would just recognize that 2 to the 10 is 2 to the 5 squared. 
2 to the 5 is 32, and I happen to know that 32 squared is 1024. So this guy here is 1024. So what we're going to do is figure out what the remainder is when this 1024 is divided by 11. And then we can basically just plug that in here. And from there, we can raise it to the power of 490, multiply it by two and get the answer to our question. Let's see how this works out. So to find the remainder when 1024 is divided by 11, I'm just gonna do some short division. Does 11 go into one? No. Does 11 go into 10? No. Does 11 go into 102? Yes, nine times with a remainder of three. Does 11 go into 34? Yes, three times with a remainder of one. One. Man, that is easy. So this means that 2 to the power of 10, which is 1024, is congruent to 1, that remainder we just found, mod 11. Then all we have to do is raise both sides to the power of 490 and then multiply by two to get back to the original number we were actually interested in. Raising the left side to the power of 490 gives us two to the 10 to the power of 490. And of course on the right, we have one to the power of 490 and this is mod 11. And then we just have to finish by doubling both sides. So on the left, we double this, and as we know, this is just two to the power of 4,900. On the right, one to the power of 490 is just one. One times one times one, 490 times, it's just one, and we are doubling that. So it's two times one, mod 11. Note that if this is your first time learning about modular congruence, I've told you very little about it. I really just said the definition and you're taking for granted that we can manipulate it like this while preserving the congruence, just like we would with an equals sign. Finally, the last step to arrive at our solution, two times two to the power of 4,900 is of course, two to the power of 4,901, the number we were originally interested in. And we see that this is congruent to two times one or just two mod 11. So what is the remainder when two to the power 4,901 is divided by 11? The remainder is two. So I hope you had fun. That's short division and a little bit about modular congruence. Next time you're with your friends and need to pass the time, maybe instead of competing in a spirited round of rock, paper, scissors, you could bust out some short division. Let me know what you think down in the comments and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos are the internet. Free from my fate, twisting to escape this. Climbing on a mop, mop, my wrist if you can break it. Breaking in my past, I'm making it up fast. So slow down, give me the time so I can fake it. Grace the tune of words and just how I say shit. And let me speak my poetry to your face. It's not in the mid if you ain't listening. Not infinite if you ain't really in the mid.